In September of 2012, a criminal made British history for a very disturbing reason. He was the first person to be convicted of using a hand grenade as a murder weapon. Before I start, just a quick 30 seconds to thank today's sponsor Wicked Clothes, who have been a great help to the channel. They make some seriously awesome funny and creepy clothing designs, and they are one of my absolute favourite companies and a real pleasure to work with. They've recently dropped some underwear designs, which I've just bought myself, but I'm sorry to say, I won't be modelling them. They also do some mega designs like these ones here, and even my dad found something that he liked. So check them out as I'm sure you'll find something you like, and if you do, you can use Disturbin in the coupon section to get 10% off. Or you can use the link in the description and it should do it for you automatically. So thank you very much. And now, on to the video. On the 18th of September 2012, two Greater Manchester police officers were dispatched to investigate a call. The caller had reported that somebody had thrown a concrete brick at his property. Now, the person who made this call was a man named Dale Cregan. Dale was a known drug dealer and he started off his criminal career in his teenage years by selling marijuana. From a young age, he was known to be dangerous. As a schoolboy, he developed a strange fascination with weapons and had a collection of knives. But as time progressed, he expanded his services. In his early 20s, he started selling cocaine. At his peak, he was raking in around 20 to 30,000 per week. And just like his business had expanded, his fascination with weapons had two. He had an arsenal of guns and grenades. Dale is a rather unique looking person and is easily recognisable. As you can see, he only has one eye. The police believe that an enemy of a rival gang had removed it with a knife for unknown reasons. But Dale claims that he lost his eye in a fight in Thailand. Whether this is true or not is unknown. But it did work in his favour as he wanted to develop an intimidating persona. This is probably why he chose not to use a prosthetic eye. Dale was involved with gangs, and something recently had happened between two rival families. Dale was called upon to inflict violence upon some seriously dangerous people. The two families that were in conflict were the Shorts family and the Atkinson family. In May of 2012, tensions had reached an all-time high between the families. One day, at a pub in Greater Manchester, a woman named Teresa Atkinson punched a man named Raymond Young. Raymond was a member of the Short family. After being punched, Raymond slapped Teresa. Instead of leaving it there, Teresa sent a message to her son Leon, explaining the situation and made demands to retaliate hard against the rival family. And this is where Dale enters the picture. Dale was good friends with Leon, so he messaged Dale and told him the story of what happened to his mother. After hearing what happened, Dale wanted to get involved personally. Dale was happy to oblige, as he too had some personal beefs with the Short family. Two weeks would pass when Dale walked into the Cotton Tree pub in Manchester, a pub where the Short family were known to drink. He put on a balaclava and armed himself with a pistol. A man named Mark Short and his father David were having a drink at the time. Dale's intention was to kill both Mark and his father David. But David just so happened to be in the bathroom at the time when Dale entered. Dale opened fire and shot Mark. Mark was killed and three other men were injured. Things had gotten way out of hand already, but now David wanted to avenge his son's death. He knew Dale was the one who was responsible, so he began to make threats against Dale's family. David had made threats saying that he would find his two-year-old son and force himself upon him. He also made threats against Dale's sister. So Dale took his family and he went to Thailand to lay low for a while. After a few weeks, he came back to the UK. Upon arrival, he was arrested but released on bail as there wasn't enough evidence to pin the crime on him. Once he was released, he moved his family out of his home and into a hotel to avoid detection from the police and the Shorts family. On August the 10th, Dale and some of his accomplices went to David's home and they shot him nine times with a pistol. 
as David lay on the ground, Dale threw a grenade at his body, completely blowing him to pieces. Here is the video that was captured from the neighbor's CCTV. There was now a £50,000 reward to anyone who could help lead to the capture of Dale. He was conscious of his impending capture, so he reached out to some fellow villains and he asked them if they would be able to help him smuggle him and his family out of the country. But there was too much heat on Dale and no one would take up the offer. Now as I mentioned at the start, a phone call was made to the police on the 18th of September 2012 which was placed by Dale Cregan. He reported that somebody had thrown a concrete brick at his property, but he never used his real name. This is the call that was placed. Police emergency. I had someone just threw a big concrete slab through me that window and ran off. Of the house or a car? What are we talking? No, sorry, in my back window, in the house. In the house. What's the address there, please? 30 Abbey Gardens, Mosham. Did you see them? Seen one, yeah. You know them? No, I don't know. Right, I'll get an officer up there, have a look round, see if they can see anybody similar, and then they'll come and see you. Alright, Adam. How long would it take? Do you know, roughly. I know that it's fucking, it's not that serious. But... Well, because it's just happened, it's gone in on the priority, so that's within the hour, certainly. But okay. so they'll try and get up there as soon as, if there's a possibility, he's still knocking about. Alright then, thanks very much. Okay. I'll, I'll wait, uh, I'll be waiting. Alright, All right, Adam. Alright, bye. Bye bye. bye. This call was made as part of a plan to ambush the police. Police officers in the Manchester area were warned that Dale was armed and would be willing to attack if he was confronted. But as I said, he had used a fake name. The two police officers that would be dispatched were Nicola Hughes and Fiona Bone. They were now unsuspectingly walking towards Dale. Dale was hiding in the house and was waiting for them to arrive. As they pulled up and got out of the van, he watched them approach. And as they walked towards the house, Dale opened fire on the unsuspecting officers. He shot both of them in the chest, but the stab-proof armour managed to stop the bullets. The two officers began to run, but Dale continued to shoot. Nicola Hughes was shot in the back just below the armour. The bullet caused immediate paralysis, and she fell to the ground. Dale then walked towards where she lay and shot her three more times, ending her life. Fiona Bone was trapped with nowhere to run and nowhere to find cover. She drew her taser, but Dale had already pointed his gun at her and began to shoot. He fired 24 bullets at her. Eight of them managed to hit her. Dale then returned to where he had shot the first officer Nicola and fired a further three bullets, but this time into her head. He then pulled the pin off a grenade and threw it at the officer's dead bodies, blowing both of them up. Immediately after Dale brutally killed the two officers, he went to the police and turned himself in. He walked up to the desk and said, I have just done two coppers in, and proceeded to tell them what he had done. He gave the police a motive. He said, you were hounding my family so I took it out on news. He told them that he was angry at the police, that they didn't take David Short's threats against his family seriously, and he claimed he was justified in taking the officers' lives, as they too had done nothing to protect him and his family from the Short family. Dale confessed to the murders of Mark and David Short, and the officers Nicola and Fiona, and also the attempted murders of the three other people at the pub, in February 2013, he was found guilty, and it was revealed that the night before he killed the officers, he had celebrated with beer and cigars, since he knew it would be his last night of freedom. Dale expressed his feelings of regret that he had killed female officers. This was deemed to be disingenuous, 
as he had watched them walk towards the property and had plenty of time to see it was two females that were approaching. The deaths of Nicola and Fiona sparked a debate about whether British police officers should be armed whilst on duty. The debate was brief and officers in the UK remain unarmed. In response to the murders, Manchester City Football Club lowered the flags outside their stadium to half-mast and they wore black armbands and held a minute silence to pay their respects. And as I said at the start, Dale was the first person in British history to be convicted of using a hand grenade as a murder weapon. Dale was sentenced to life in prison, but was given a whole life tariff, which means he will never be released. It's thought that Dale believed he would only get around 15 years for the crimes he committed. He fears for his life in prison, as he thinks there will be a revenge attack for his part in the murders of the Shorts family. He thinks there might be a price on his head. Either way, Dale will die in prison. <laughs>